Hello, my name is Fritz Kao. This is Raven Brooks. And welcome to our YouTube show, Factual Conspiracy. Tonight's topic is uh, pretty much we have found three different things associated with the missing 411 series that have been talked about by several different people. Uh, we have fairies, we have uh, Jin Jindin, and we also have uh, Tengu. And I think I might have pronounced um, the middle Jin. one, Jin, just yeah. Jin. D-J-I-N-N. -N. There's also another variation. Yes. Uh, J-I-N-N. -N, but uh, we're particularly talking about the uh, uh, in Arabian lore. You know, there, there's actually a, a a a book in the Quran, a chapter in the Quran dedicated to the Jin. <clears throat> And yeah, let's just jump in with the gin and our and our first one. I mean, but basically, before we do, the whole point of today's show is that me and Raven, through our discussions that we have on a personal level and with you guys on our show, have realized that there are significant correlations between these three particular uh, cryptids. I guess we're going to call them cryptids, and uh, we're we're talking about in relation to missing people. Uh, in, in the style of the disappearance of the people, uh, what people who are found do say that they experienced when they've uh, claimed that it's been fairies, uh, when they've claimed that it's been jinn, when they've claimed that it's been, and when we're talking about jinn, we're talking about what's commonly associated, uh, the genie in the bottle. Uh, we're, I'm correct on that, right, Raven? Yeah, well, I mean, they can also masquerade as anything, humans, animals, ghosts, cryptids, other entities uh, such as extraterrestrials, demons, shadow people, fairies, angels, and more. I mean, there's there's dozens yes. of these, you know. And that's the whole point that uh, we're trying to make this evening is that um, we have noticed a correlation between these three things, the tango, the gen, and the fairies, that they all do the same type of uh, things like uh, number one. Uh, the shape shifting that was something we found very interesting that each three of these are able to do and uh, I can comment on the tango I mean uh, it's been said that the tango can transform into elderly people into uh, a warrior type creature or uh, like a warrior type bird creature uh, just a normal warrior type of individual and uh, it's been even said that it's been seen as an old woman and uh, it likes to play tricks on people in the woods, and it's been known for actually murdering people if it trespasses in its uh, area where it lives. And it definitely has been known or described in a folklore to murder, in Asian folklore, to, to murder individuals if they disturb their lair at all, you know, where they live. Yeah, now you're going to know a little bit more about, <clears throat> excuse me, the Tengu, um, than I am, uh, as far as the research I've done. Um, and you with so the jinn. Yeah, well, the jinn and, and uh, uh, fairies, you know, and and believe it or not, there is, you know, three main branches, and, and some of those, you know, the ones that I've, you know, according to pre-Islamic lore, uh, the jinn are born of, they're born of smokeless fire. Wow. Which in modern times, you know, you could probably associate it with plasma. Okay. And they live very long lives, and but they're not immortal apparently. And according to some accounts, they live uh, with other supernatural beings. You know, uh, a mythological range of emerald mountains that encircle the earth, uh, the calf. Uh, in other words, in modern terms, they live uh, in a parallel dimension. Wow. Do you know? Um, what they said where they tend to live that's something I'm not familiar with on that particular thing at all yeah well the jinn like they like to roam the deserts okay. and wilderness and inhabit caves they're, they're usually invisible um, but have the power to shape shift into any form uh, be it insect animal human entity or another entity like a ghost or whatever they have uh, been regarded as uh, malicious or dangerous uh, capable of bringing bad luck illness disaster, even death. And uh, even when granting favors 
they have a trickster type nature that can twist events to the worst, you know, for the worst. They like to play tricks on people. And that's what I, I that's, again, this is the correlation we noticed. And with the Tango, they like to play tricks so bad that they've even been known to trick people. Like they, they wander them around through mirages and things to get them lost in the woods and keep them away from food. And until they're delirious days later, they'll try to trick them into eating uh, animal feces. Yeah. That's that's weird, man. I mean, big time tricksters. It, I mean, a lot of these. I mean, there are a lot. Now, now I gotta tell you, you know, I'm, I'm gonna make this statement. The some of the main, I mean, more well known uh, beings that are supposed to be able to do these things, you know, one being the jinn, which is you know in the Quran, one being fairies, which goes back, you know, you know, to the Celts and uh, uh, you know, way back before even uh, Northern Christianity. Northern European the traditions believed in such beings. You know, yeah, Northern European traditions. Yeah, and the, the other, believe it or not, we don't have to go into too deeply, but is fallen angels, and they are associated with um, with uh, and with <clears throat> excuse me with fairies. And just if I can make a brief. Um, uh, the uh, you know fairies are uh, said to have you know they they uh, inhabit you know mounds and whatnot and rocks um, earthen mounds fairy mounds are said to live within the earth and uh, you know you know the writer J R Tolkien um, he might have called Middle Earth might have called Middle Earth you know in the books the Lord um, of the Rings yeah the early Celts believed that the natural world uh, around them, rocks, you know, trees, bodies of water, were alive with the spirits, elemental forces, and uh, were unfriendly to the race of men, and were always conspiring to do us harm. Unless uh, the proper offerings, you know, and prayers were made. And with the introduction to Christianity, to the deep forests of Northern Europe, the idea of fallen angels mixed with the concept of fairies, and they were seen as something that was not altogether godly or, or, nor entirely demonic and condemned to inhabit the earth somewhere in between heaven and hell and still, uh, holding on to the, you know, they're still holding on to the potent powers of magic. So, um, that's where that, the, the connection between fallen angels and fairies came from. So we delve into the fairy, uh, lore and you can actually combine that, you know, just, you know, with the newer, uh, introduction to fallen angels. You know. And another thing, me and a raven actually clued on with these three things. I mean, wrap your mind around this for a second, ladies and gentlemen. With these three things, they're known to be shapeshifters. They're known to be tricksters, etc., etc. It, it, there's so many correlations, and we will go through them more as the show progresses. But another point we want to bring up is that when we started thinking about this in an objectional sort of way, kind of all the different cryptid type creatures that are out there that's a possibility could be just one entity of some sort or some creature some alien being i mean this is all hypothesis but it's something interesting to think about when lots of these things are known to be shapeshifters yeah it's, it's just interesting how all these different cultures have these you know these beings that can change into anything and you know i believe you know, if you think about it, it's actually pretty, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense to say that, that uh, each different culture perceives a certain being to be a certain way because of the way they live, their environment or their belief system. Um, <clears throat> and they always depict them looking a different way, but their characteristics and uh, yeah. and, and the events that surround these creatures are all mainly uh, significantly identical in nature. The events that transpire around the, the stories coming out of these uh, local native regions throughout the world, yeah, they're all they're all very interesting and and somewhat related in fashion. Yeah, you know, uh, the one thing I know, liked you, about the fairies that David Pledis is always uh, commenting on is um, that. In, I believe it's Norway, Netherlands, or it's Greenland, 
that they build roads around where they believe entities are inhabiting like rocks and mountain and boulder areas. And this is something David Putty's comments on in his books and on his appearances on shows. And uh, I thought that was really interesting. So they must hold to the theory that, that there's something that will harm them if they disturb these areas. Yeah, well, <clears throat> giving David Pilates, you know, a little bit of props here. Um, in his series of books called Missing 411, you know, David Pilates, he's a former law enforcement officer. He deals in hundreds of cases of missing people, uh, missing children, adults, elderly. You know, the books, you know, deal with baffling disappearances in, in, uh, all over the world, pretty much. Yeah. Um, none of the cases that they that uh, that he is involved in have never been solved, though the victims sometimes do come back alive, or unfortunately their lifeless body is found in some bizarre case, and yeah. nobody can you know no reason could be you know found why they disappeared to start with, um, and details surrounding the event is just as bizarre in how they even went missing. <coughs> Excuse me. Of course, uh, there are probably ordinary, you know, mundane reasons for for some of the cases. But uh, um, you remember that recent radio interview? It's not quite recent, but it was a, a year or so ago on Coast to Coast. He related the story um, that's like many of the others: a young child goes missing in the middle of the night, and when it seems, it, it almost seems impossible that he even could have snuck away, you know. Yeah. And uh, and when they see the family dog, it's acting kind of weird. And, and like it was spooked or something. Okay. And uh, if the you know that one case was when the kid comes back and he reports seeing a robot that looked like his grandma, now that, or another little girl who was led to her safety by another little girl. She said that that uh, they come to find out that she had been, you know, that seems to be some kind of a ghost episode. Well, but what I take away from the the boy with the robot grandmother story, you know, taken down to the cavern and the, the robot grandma wanting yeah. him to poop on a piece of paper that some kind of DNA testing was going on there, is what I would assume based upon yeah. the story. But if you look at the if it's lore accurate, of, of, if it's real. Of, uh, you know, gin and and uh, fairies, um, you know, Tricksters. some of these people come back in like a semi-conscious state with a kind of fever yeah. that they later come out of. And the tango and, with the making people eat their own poop and the lady wrote and his grandma a robot wanting him to poop on a piece of paper and then being done with him after he wouldn't, you know, like the go back and forth, like poop on the paper. No, I won't. Yes, you will. No, you, no, I won't. All right. Get yeah, that was kind of weird. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah. Then you got to take into account the age of the kid, you know. And, For and, you sure. Know, yeah, and his interpretation. Was he, was he asleep? Was he dreaming? I mean, you really got to, you know, look at all aspects of it. But uh, Our age but, and our mental fortitude really, you know, hampers our ability to, you know, accurately interpret events that are going on around us. You see, if you look at if you look at the cases he's talking about with all these people that are coming back kind of not knowing where they were, I mean, going back thousands of years, you know, these... There, there are accounts of people that were really afraid of fairy type creatures or jinn, and they, they did the same thing. They, they, uh, they made, you know, they could make people view an area that was safe and actually walk off cliffs. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like you'd be walking through the, the forest and you know, just a nice little field right there, and you'd walk. And uh, there's lots of accounts of, of the of when you walked out towards you know into the middle of the field, all of a sudden you fall off a cliff, and the illusion of the field is gone. And we wonder how this could happen in the Missing 411 series. Well, like, one thing I know about Jin and Tango is that they have been, you know, stories have been told about them that they could turn into clouds, you know, so they could yeah. cause condensation to where you're walking right off a cliff. And we always wonder how could these people walk right off a cliff? Well, this could slightly explain that, possibly. Yeah, and then the confusion. And, and you know, as far as fairies go, I mean, there have been legends of fairies uh, in every country of the world. I mean, ancient Greece and Rome yeah. worship the nymphs. They're called nymphs yeah. of meadows, you know, streams and mountains. Yes. And the dryads, um, who live in, in trees, apparently. Ireland uh, is, I mean, huge with tales of people who, who have encountered leprechauns, that show them buried treasure, the end of rainbows and all that, you know, you know the whole story. Um, yeah. There are even uh, wailing, you know, screeching banshees. Um that heralded the death of relatives uh, and drunken people who stole from wine cellars, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, lots um, of interesting tales. In England, there, there's an old, there are old pamphlets describing the mischievous antics of Robin Goodfellow. And this, these are from my notes. Uh, the merry spirit of the Greenwood who cared for its animals and played tricks on hunters. Huh. And stories of, of West Country pixies who led travelers astray, um, but who helped kindly farmers uh, with their work. There are fam uh, familiar, similar fables from Africa, Hawaii, the Americas, Australia, Europe, Japan, China, and Russia. I mean, all over the place, man. I mean... That's the main theme of the Tango, too, is that they love to play tricks so much that they will wander people aimlessly for days to drive them insane. You know what I mean? Just yeah. for the fun of it. I mean, that's what they enjoy to do. And that's if you catch them on a good day. If you catch them on a bad day, they'll have murderous intentions for you. Like if you disturb their, uh, you know, where they sleep, you know, their domicile. You know what I mean? Then, yeah, they're definitely going to come at you with murderous intent, according to the tales. And uh, fairies, I believe, are the same way, too. And uh, gin as well. If you disturb any of these three layers, they will be upset and want to murder you. I'm, I'm, I think I'm correct. You'd have to comment on the gin part, though, but I'm not positive. Well, the gin, the Islamic theology um, absorbed the gin. It, it has an entire chapter in the Quran concerning them, you know. Okay. Um, according to the Muslim faith, humans were created from clay and water and angels from a special and pure spiritual light. Um, jinn were created from the smokeless fire, of course, we went into that earlier, um, uh, and they are invisible to most people. And uh, under certain conditions, you know, certain conditions, they can appear as, as many different, you know, aliens, all these people have seen uh, just a wide variety of, of uh, jinn that they, that they believed were jinn uh, in different forms. And this is all described in the Quran. Yeah, and the jinn were they were uh, on Earth before man, and uh, it's not it's not really known for how long, but in some accounts uh, they were created two thousand years before Adam and Eve, apparently. You know? Wow! Now, in my and, research, uh, Bud, um, we'll go we'll go right back. I just want to ask you one question about them. In in my personal research, I found that the Tengu actually could control the weather somewhat. Like, so say they wanted to disappear, someone in a search party came in, well, the Tengu could call in a storm. You know, that could affect the weather to hamper those efforts. Did the jinn, they have those capabilities too, right? If they wanted to, they could call, they could uh, cause it to rain or a thunderstorm. Oh, well, they have magical powers. Well, yeah. you, you know, there's there's a, uh, a story uh, um, about uh, one story. Uh, it tells a story of, the, of a jealous uh, uh, genie. Okay. Um, it's sometimes, you know, sometimes it's, it's uh, identified as Asmodeus, like the demon Asmodeus. Okay. Well, apparently, um, stole Solomon's ring while he bathed in the River Jordan, and the the, the genie uh, seated himself on the king's throne and uh, at his palace and reigned over his kingdom, forcing Solomon to become to become a wanderer. And God apparently uh, compelled the genie to fill the ring into the sea. And Solomon retrieved it and punished the genie by imprisoning him in a bottle. And that's where the genie in the bottle, you know, story comes from. The, all, the whole story, yeah. like, of Aladdin and whatnot, the genie in the bottle. And so, the, you know, the genie can be, can be conjured in magical rites. Um, they are difficult to control. And uh, one individual said to have complete power over the jinn was, was the legendary biblical king, Solomon. And God gave Solomon a copper and iron magic ring that enabled him to subdue the jinn, in which he protected him from their powers. And uh, in some accounts, the ring was inscribed with a pentacle, and in other accounts, it was set with a gem, probably a diamond, you know, um, that had been had a, a living force of its own. Uh, with the ring, Solomon branded the necks of the jinn as his slaves and set them uh, to working buildings. Uh, his temple. To building, to building the first temple. Yeah, of Solomon's Jerusalem. temple. And even the entire city of Jerusalem as the story goes. Yeah, that's the story that we hear uh, that Solomon used temple uh, demons to build his temple, and the jinn are the uh, demons that they speak of. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting, Raven. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up, buddy. Um, is there any other creatures you think that we could, I mean, you've brought up a lot of ones that I didn't even know about, like the, the Robin Hood type uh, Mary Trickster. 
in England or whatnot. But um, is there any other creatures that you've heard about that you'd like to bring? Oh up? man, there's, there's there's dozens. But I mean, if you if you just think about some of the the extraterrestrial uh, connections here, I mean, honestly, you know, America has you know, I mean, it's all over the world, but mainly here in America, you know. There's two different have, types of UFOs. Uh, lots of sightings, sightings of these gray-looking beings. Now, if you, the, the connection to fairies with, mm -hmm. with uh, you know, even the sighting. I mean, look at the the alien grays just have big almond eyes. And if you look back elves and all these uh, fairy lore, they're supposed to have big almond eyes as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to me, that's a, that's a huge connection. And with the UFOs, bud... And this has got to be said that there's two different types of sightings when it comes to the UFOs. That there's solid craft, and then there's other types of craft that look like the whole form of the craft is morphing and changing. Like it's not really even a craft. And sometimes people have theories that these are fallen angels or beings from another dimension. And there's actually other different, various other theories too. And maybe there's some you'd like to bring up as well. Yeah, man, there's there's a lot of them. I mean, I think I I, I ran down a list. I couldn't. I mean, these these you know these uh, names are you know you get hard to pronounce. You know, because there's there's like all over the world. You know, you you know even it, like in certain countries, uh, you have a tribe that lives in a certain area, and even even another tribe thirty miles away will have a different name for the same type of creature. You know. And there's, yeah. I mean, there's like dozens and dozens of names out there, you know. Um, I, you know, I couldn't even really get into it. Tengu was one of those. Um, and you have a lot more information about that. And now that when we I talk do. about Tengu, one thing I just wanted to chime in on is that there's various different names to it. But it's a being that's talked about in the same manner with the same capabilities and same description by a different name throughout the whole Asiatic uh, area over there. So all the age we're, we're talking about in Vietnam, we're talking about in Japan, we're talking about in China. You know, I mean, not in every single one, but most of those have a creature that is somewhat like a Tengu creature with the various different names. You know what I mean? And they have they all speak various different dialects too, so it's understandable. Well, it's a mistake to think that all, all you know all fairies, though, in, in, you know, hypothetically are are you know with all the accounts. Uh, that are small in stature, you know, I mean, you can even put a Bigfoot type creature in this, in the mix here, you know, kind of like the, the elves uh, in the Lord of the Rings, you know, some fairies in the olden time reported, you know, to be very tall, slender, with long faces, almond shaped eyes. And you've uh, also said in the I'm past that, that when they change shapes, that they can change into trees, into boulders, that they're known to morph into these objects. Yeah, well, I mentioned that because there's a belief that has been around for some time, that the fairies were a, a real race of people living alongside human beings, mm -hmm. um, but possessing mag magical powers. And they were small and slight in appearance, and uh, they were extremely attractive uh, to the human cousins, you know. Um, this is, you know, uh, I know somebody who believes that they're still around today. There's a lot of people that still believe they're around today, and that some of them are not to be trusted. And, uh, uh, People suspect certain people have had fairy blood, you know, and that's that's where another connection between the alien hybrid crap comes in, you know. Interesting. Okay. Um, so they don't, uh, they don't not you know they don't possess any unique abilities, you know, to perform people action or thing. But uh, I'm told that uh, if, if these individuals bring bad luck with them sometimes, and a weird individual suddenly appear out of nowhere and stalk, you know. Or menace, as if attracted by this dark, you know, dark kind of energy. Um, Interesting, uh, like a shadow, shadow man type creature, or no? Yeah, well, well, yeah. You, you have. I mean, if you think about it, all these, you know, there's just a, there's kind of a connection, theoretical connection between all of these. Yes. Uh, you know, different creatures, and they all have a common theme, and it's that they yes. trick people. They can change shapes. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the uh, accounts of different, the different type, the different names of each being, they 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 have a different shape each time. But they're mostly you know I mean? all you described. Look different than the fairy, the fairy looks different than the extraterrestrial. Extraterrestrial looks different than the Bigfoot. Bigfoot looks different than a fallen angel. 
you know, in their true form. But what, how do you know what the true form is? And the story you know, is, is it. that with all of these creatures is that, you know, from time to time, not as much with Bigfoot, but sometimes even with Bigfoot, that they can morph and change into other different things. Are they, are they physical beings or ephemeral beings, you know, phantoms? You know, what are they? You know what I mean? There's something. It just seems, you know, it, you can even put into, if anybody is familiar with the, the uh, Skinwalker Ranch uh, story, you know, with Bigelow and uh, the Sherman Ranch and all this, uh, there's been a lot of researchers, in the, you know, and the stuff, some of the stuff that was happening out there, in fact, a lot of the stuff that was happening out there were... Indic, you know, indicative of, of fairies and, and gin uh, activity, you know. Uh, well, imagine like the wolf, but also that they shot and it didn't die and, it, and it, dis, it disappeared. Like they were shooting chunks of flesh off this thing with the 306 or something. And uh, yeah. anyway, long story short is I thought about like if Bigfoot can change and morph into pretty much most things. What if he, when he dies, if he just changed himself into a, like a mound of dirt? You know, he just stays like that forever as he dies. Yeah, well, just walking yeah over exactly. No, what, you know, what can you do? How can you, how can you know those defend things, you know? against something that can change shape into anything, you know? Yeah, and I mean, it just, it really makes you wonder, you know what I mean? And, and you really don't, you, these are things that we'll probably never know for sure, but this is all an interesting, interesting theory. That we have put forth for you guys here today something that we think about and uh we just we're, we're curious what you guys think about it too please feel free to leave a comment what you guys yeah, think of absolutely. our theory and uh we, we kind of have two two theories here one is that the three creatures that we originally started talking about are the same but also that there's a second theory that possibly most of these things are the same thing and who knows if we've even seen its true form and maybe some people would want to call it a demon or an alien or uh, a psychic Bigfoot. I mean, that that could be all that this uh, this creature's ability could be is that it could actually the it, all it's capable to do is psychically mess with our minds. Wouldn't that be neat? Yeah, if that exactly. was the ability. Like none of these other things were even transpiring. It just had the ability to mess with our minds when we were out in the woods, like as described by Tengu, fairies, and Jin. The tricksters like to drive people crazy and uh yes we definitely all need more info on these subjects that's how i feel i, I don't know about you buddy i did, <laughs> i just am like a sponge when it comes to this stuff eat it all up well well the fairy you know the fairies elves demons angels whatever you want to call them uh, they've been alive in our minds apparently in the material wor world seemingly um since the dawn of humankind uh, were they a race of humans that has now gone or interbred with us? Elementals inhibiting, you know, inhibiting or inhabiting uh, sections of land. House spirits, figments of the imagination. In World War II, gremlins were actually seen as the cause of aircraft equipment problems. You, you, remember, you know that? Yeah. And when you think and of... They were, sometimes, they were sometimes made into dolls and used for good luck charms. And when you think of the Greek gods... Think about how they were described as being evil tricksters that would do horrible things to people. Most of them, not all of them, but a lot of them. And uh, that some some of that fits into some of this too. I mean, when you when you if you really start examining it with open eyes, with a fresh mind from this theory that we're putting forth, it's uh, it's it's really it's really interesting. It's very, definitely I find it highly interesting to myself. And this is something we've just started. Uh, theorizing on in the, what, the past week, yeah. something we just came to the conclusion on in conversation. Well, if I may add, the uh, the recent Disney film, you know, the one with Angelina Jolie, is the, she's a fairy godmother, huh. Maleficent. I watched that with my uh, daughter. I know I'm very familiar. Yeah. Okay. It's a, it had a huge, you know, box office opening, <clears throat> and, it, and, and it, it's a testament to the uh, immortal power of the fairy on our subconscious, you know. Yeah. Um, do they come from a different realm or a different dimension? That's that's what I want to know. I mean, that, that's what that's I guess that's the big question. Um, is this what happens when people go missing? Has something pulled them, you know, in, and they just vanish, or did something come out from from another realm and took them away? You know, at, at a time, a lot of the things we would be discussing here would be uh, considered. Uh, uh, you know, unrealistic and, and fantastical. But the truth of the matter is, is NASA holds to the truth that uh, 
portals are real. You know, they have planned exploration of them and they're exploring them currently. You know, portals. What if these creatures are able to somehow uh, psychically access these portals? I mean, I'm just jumping to conclusions here, but these are interesting theories that I, we have not heard anyone put out before that we would like to put out for you guys to consider. Well, um, some of the information I want to I want to um, get a holler out for uh, Mark Turner. It's Mark Turner's Mysterious World. Um, some of the sources that I found some of these stories in that be Dark Fairies by Bob Curran, um, Celtic Lore and the History of the Druids and Their Timeless Traditions by Ward Rutherford, um, The Witch Book, Encyclopedia of Witchcraft, Wicca, and Neo-Paganism, and that's by Raymond Buckling. Oh, I would like to cite text, obviously, uh, David Pledis and most of his uh, Missing Absolutely, Family One yeah, book yeah, series. This is, this is a, and uh, I unfortunately wasn't prepared for this, but there were some older texts that I have uh, read in ancient lore on um, Tengu books. And if you guys are interested in these books, and uh, just leave a comment, and I will hunt, hunt up the name of these books for you guys so you can read them yourselves if you're interested. Um, but yeah, again, it's the Jin, the Tengu, and uh, fairies, but also, if you want, there's many other different things you can connect in there. So, but, but those three, in example, are almost identical, except for in description, I would say, in a name. Wouldn't you agree, buddy? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, do, do you have any comments that you know that we had from the last show? Oh, you wanna that's a great address? show. Uh, I'm gonna get on the first one. And uh, go. Uh, feel free to hunt up one, a couple yourself, buddy. We'll do a couple here. Okay. The first comment is from Pam Martin, and she writes: Each letter of Lucifer in quotations stands for the description of the Vatican's telescope. Now, if you didn't catch our last show, feel free to kick the click the factual conspiracy tab below the name here, coast to coast, missing four one one alternative, new show and topics exclamation mark. Click that tab, and it's the video right, you can click the then the video tab, and it's the video right before that. And uh, we talk about the Vatican's uh, uh, ec uh, space exploration uh, telescope that they named uh, Lucifer, and the interesting story of uh, battling over Native Americans over their traditional land site where they wanted to build. And you guys should check out, we won't go into it here, if you want to uh, check it out, feel free to do so. But uh, yeah, Pam, that is a very interesting comment. We def I personally like that, so I thumbed that up myself, and uh, I will definitely be researching the validity of that statement. Uh, you know, we take everything with a grain of salt, but if that's true, that's very interesting. Very interesting indeed, and I would say it's actually uh, disturbing. Yeah. You have any? Uh, Sorry, what? Do you have Do you have a response for Pam's comment? Yeah, I just find it. Well, I just find that I, I didn't do any research on that, um, but I will. Um, I, Me I too. find it extremely bizarre. I mean, considering that if the, the Vatican's observatory and that the actual that that even makes it more bizarre to me, to where the the uh, it's like an acronym for the telescope, and it happens to spell Lucifer. I mean, really? <laughs> I mean, does that not make it even more? astronomically improbable that that name would come out and you and and if it was an accident you know how how can that be an accident you know what i mean it's just it's just way too bizarre to be an accident no no that was that i was mean i mean planned. i mean the people naming this stuff had to have named it coming up with that name lucifer one come on you know come on no, right below I mean, think, think about that yeah i know it's really it's it's sinister. It's creepy. That, that, that it's would have disturbing. to be I mean, almost you know it's so improbable, almost impossible that that would just be. That's so. I don't believe in coincidences. Uh, you know, like that. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> just don't. Well, they are. But here's the thing. One coincidence, okay, but several over and over and over again become not coincidences. Well, if you think of think about it, the Vatican has an observatory that the acronym apparently for the, you know, telescope that they use, happen, just so happens to spell Lucifer? Hmm. Really? I mean, I, I bet you you could walk down and buy 10 winning million-dollar lottery tickets 
with a lower probability. Yeah, I you definitely know? understand what you're saying. Yeah, for sure. And I agree a hundred percent. Yeah, that's just, that just, that just blows me away. It really does, man. <laughs> We've got another comment right below that on the same show, which is the show with the, the with the telescope that we're talking about in it, and it's from Panzer Faust, and it says, "Great show, dot 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 dot." Please keep it coming! Exclamation mark. Thanks, buddy. We appreciate your support. All right, did you have any comments that you had uh, wanted to pick out, bud? Okay, yeah, I was actually looking at the one. Uh, that we uh, did the Mel's hole, okay. um, our Mel's hole connection with missing four one one. This is from Scuba Duber. It was about two weeks ago. Uh, he says, "Fritz, this was really a great show. Only problem was a discrepancy in the volume of you and Raven, the Raven guy. Uh, parentheses, who was great as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, good info and back and, and yes, back and thanks, forth. Bud. Would like to see more of these shows like this. Okay." You know, the volume thing, you know, there is a bit of a delay. And uh, I apologize for clearing my throat sometimes, you know, because, uh, you know, I'm, I probably shouldn't, but I shouldn't drink coffee while I'm doing this. <laughs> um, so we're, I'm trying to work on that. I mean, we're trying to work on getting uh, some, you know, eventually get some better equipment, sound equipment. So Pretty we soon to we're going to go cyborg. Thing. So you guys won't have to worry about us needing to eat food to live or breathe oxygen to survive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I just, you know, um, I appreciate the, the comment, man. And uh, yeah, we're working on that. I think we did a little bit better this time. Um, but uh, this whole this whole thing about uh, you know other dimensional beings that are appearing to certain cultures as different types of things, and just it's like a trickster type, you know, phenomena, you know. And when you go, when you say trickster, you, you talk about all these really strange things that, that happen when people see ghosts or, or like in the, uh, one, one, I wanted to bring up this one, uh, account okay. of the, uh, uh, Skinwalker Ranch thing. Well, somebody had, you know, the, the family previous to, uh, Robert Bigelow buying the property and sending out, uh, scientists to do the, the research. Uh, well, the woman had went went to this woman that lived there. The wife went to uh, you know went to town and got some couple weeks worth of groceries. Brought them brought them back and put put them up on the counter. And she she went to go do something in the other room for a moment and come back. And she had actually put up all the groceries. Well, she'd come back and all the groceries were put back in the bag, just like you know she hadn't done it. That type of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. And things happening like right under people's noses where something would disappear or something would happen even when there's a camera trained on it Trickster and they just can't stuff. figure out is there, is there a time stop do they do they you know is there, are they able to tamper with you know with our time where we they can run in and do things you know while we're in a frozen time stop position or whatever you know i know that's articulated well but but yeah. it just seems to be that that they're able to do things right in front of people these beings and and you can't tell what happened until it just ha it just happened you know and again it goes in with our theory tricksters i mean and did they hurt that lady no but did they want the lady to know that they were there they did they wanted whatever was causing that disturbance wanted yeah, to mess to with like, that lady like just a prank yeah you know? just I mean, this lady would find like like uh like towels in the freezer you know um i guess uh the husband um, was out digging a, a post with okay. a post hole digger. All right. And uh, and he, you know, turned around for a second to do something, turned back around, and the post hole digger was gone. And I guess he couldn't find it until two weeks later. It was 40 feet up in a tree. Huh. Yeah, yeah I, I'm That's sure the, he misplaced it up there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I mean, I mean, he, he would just turn his back on, on it for a moment. I mean, if you... If you want to find out about the Skinwalker Ranch, I'm sure a lot of you you guys out there already know. There's some really intriguing stories. We'll eventually do uh, a show on it too, I'm sure. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should play. I know quite a bit about that. I mean, the oh. whole Bigelow, uh, you know, buying the property and the you know from the wolf to the uh, the, to, I the mean, what, what really did it for deal. him out there was his dog getting fried out there. Three of his dogs got killed. And he said, "This is enough," you know. And we'll go into the whole details of it in another show. 
Um, I don't want to cut you off. I just wanted to read one more comment, and then I'll, I'll let you go ahead and pick another one, too. And this is an interesting comment from uh, Mr. Reaper. Thanks for leaving a comment, bud. He says, uh, Bill Cooper had his doubt about Jordan Maxwell. And this is in re reference to our uh, Researcher Silence or Kill video. <laughs> he says, uh, Bill Cooper had his doubt about Jordan Maxwell on the back burner as well. And I respect William Cooper. I'm sure lots of people out there do as well. I'm not trying to smear any image of Jordan, but when the coop talks, I listen. And he made Maxwell out to be a shill like Alex Jones. I don't know if that's entirely true or not, but one thing's for sure. Two men who revealed this stuff are still alive, and one man who went too far is now dead, William Cooper. Keep the Cooper mentality ongoing, people. He wanted you to wake up to the truth. And uh, here's Nicholas Cremento's response to Mr. Reaper's comment. You have to dig deep with Jordan Maxwell. He tells you that the Jesuits rule the world and asked you to do some research. And when I did, I found that like the Freemasons with Adam Weishaupt, the Jews have taken over the Jesuits as well. And my response would be, thank you, Mr. Reaper, for leaving your comment, and thanks, Nick, as well. And I also agree with Nick on his point that you need to do some research. All right, thanks a bunch, guys, for your comments. I really do appreciate it. Raven, did you have any other comments on uh, that you wanted to uh, read and then answer? Um. I well, always I was, agree I was with. One from, uh, from I always us. agree with William Cooper on most of what he said. His early yeah. stuff was pretty wild, but at the end, he really was hitting some nails on the head with the hammer just fine. Are you done? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, well, mine was uh, about a month ago, and it was actually Mr. Reaper too. Um, this was off the "What's Taking People" video. Okay. Um, he writes, "Wow." That bit with the foot disappearing, that's insane. And that's where the guy was walking through the woods and it felt really quiet. All of a sudden, he's seen a blurry thing in the air, you know, like a portal. And he put his foot, in, his leg in it, it disappeared like he stuck it into a wall. You know, you remember hearing that from David Pilatus? Yes. Well, he said, that's insane. Now we have a good report of someone almost leaving this plane of existence. And they're alive and mentally well enough to make the statement credible. I found it. I, fa I find it a very real account. If he wanted to make something up, he would have said that he stayed around the portal and wondered what else it might do. But no, he did something very human. Got scared and got the hell out of there. <laughs> I know I would have. That's something out of. That's that's like something out of a movie. I wonder what it felt like. Both the feeling of seeing that happening, and also what did the area where the foot disappeared feel like. Was it hot there, cold, windy, different pressure due to shifty gra shifting gravity? Very inquisitive questions, and th these are all valid points. You know, I, I want to, you know, I would, I definitely, exactly, he put into words how I would, you know, question that. Um, have you ever had anything like that? You know, a feeling like that in the woods anywhere? Me, Rich? me personally, um, I've actually been spending uh, the night out in the woods since even being familiar with the Missing 411 series. And I want to say one thing in reference to that, that most of these people who do have these stories are people that are by themselves. And uh, yeah. I uh, normally always go out in the woods with another, you know, like with my dad or friends, family members, and uh, definitely always my dog, too, even with those people. And uh, I really never have, to be completely 100% honest with you. I mean, I've had creepy feelings before for no reason at all being out in the woods behind my house, though. But then again, you know, I'll be out there by myself sometimes traversing a quarter mile or a stretch in the woods, you know, all by myself. And that can just be creepy generally, you know, sometimes. That's life, you know. I've never experienced the stillness or the silence that has been described in the, the books or the, the talk shows with uh, David Pilates. But um, I had two quick comments I wanted to read, and then I'll, I'll let you uh, wrap this up with whatever, if you want to read any more yourself. Yeah, um, just one more after you're done. Okay. Uh, my first one is from Katie uh, Brazelli, and I do apologize if I said your, pronounced your uh, last name wrong, Katie. I've never heard of Mel's Hole. This is in reference to our Mel's Hole video. This is fascinating. Imagine spelunking in such a thing. 
if it even had a bottom. Vaguely reminds me of the novel House of Leaves, where a house spawns an endless changing labyrinth of walls and chambers in an impossible space. <laughs> Very interesting uh, comic, Katie, and she has two likes. One is for me. All right. Uh, one more here uh, from Tammy, and I apologize if I pronounce your last name wrong, too, uh, Beardsley. Uh, Fritz, I've been watching your stuff since early Fritz K. Ovens, and you're getting better as you go along. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Don't worry about that. Take constructive feedback, dot, dot, dot. Learn from it and blow off the assholes. I think you're doing great. Thank you very much, Tammy. That means a lot to me. All right. Um, yeah, I do plan on uh, blowing off the assholes, too, Jamie. It's great advice. Uh, I try my best. I am human. And when I do respond, I try to be insultive, but keep it classy, as in reference to trolls and uh, insultive and disrespectful people in general. So keep that in mind. If you want to leave a nasty comment on my page, being personally insultive, just for no reason other than that's what you enjoy to do, well, you might get that back a little back at you. All right, Move, <laughs> yeah. moving on here. Um, okay, uh, I just had two, actually two I wanted to mention. Uh, uh, Christine Newman, about a week ago on the, the What's Taking People video on okay. Factual Conspiracy, um, she writes, We lived in Fairbanks, and we seen a Bigfoot cross the highway doing, uh, going to Delta Junction, Alaska. It went across the highway in four steps at a high rate of speed. I could care less if anyone believes me. I seen it, and it was huge. Now that'd be somebody that I, you know, I'd like to get hear more from, you know, because that'd be, you know, I mean, a absolutely. If you guys have any questions, what we should do, Fritz, man, is give them a, a email um, or something they can they can send a, an attachment, you know, of, of their account, so we can, you know, do do a show on some of these. We will, and I had this planned. We're gonna set up a phone number, so when we're when we are doing. The show we'll let people know exactly like a days like a couple days before on Facebook a planned time for the show where people can call in and ask questions. Yeah, uh, well, maybe I should give you want me to give. Uh, I could actually give my my uh, business email. Okay, um, go ahead. I mean, we do have links to all of our emails on our YouTube channel. But, yeah. Um, yeah, give get, give out all your personal information, Raven. Well, no, because, I'm just gonna uh, give a, a Ravenbrooks at Gmail dot com. If, if you feel that you want to send a story or some account or want to correspond that way, we can do it through comments or whatever or Facebook. Um, but if you want to do that, like I said, Raven Brooks, it's Raven Brooks 2013 at gmail.com. Yeah, that's what it is. Sorry. Like I've used that a whole lot. And also, if you want to get in touch with me, you can go to, and this is all lowercase, all things PC Mac at gmail.com. All lowercase, and one more time, it's all things with an S, PCMac at gmail.com. Yeah, just just so they, because I think I said my email wrong the first time. It's Ravenbrooks2013 at gmail.com. Um, one other comment I wanted to uh, uh, read here was Lori Gannon. Uh, it was two weeks ago on the same uh, What's Taking People video. Um, David Pilatus should be given public credit for his commentary and work in this field. And I, I just want to say, and I'm sure you feel the same, Fritz, that yes, we wouldn't be sitting here discussing this if it weren't for David Pilatus, and we appreciate, you know, all the work that he's done. Um, we may have, you know, people may not agree with everything he does, but, uh, you know, we got to give him props. Oh, yes, we, we appreciate the, the amount of time and effort that he's put into uh, uh, finding out this information and bringing it to the public eye and, and uh, correlating the uh, cluster uh, GPS uh, locations. And uh, the truth of the matter is, is that there's not just him to thank to, there's a whole slew of other authors out there that have wrote books about missing people. And without yeah. all their due diligence, um, I'm sure there'd be a lot of information that the public just was not informed on. And David Pledis is one of those. And uh, yeah. there's uh, other other books like uh, Disappearance in the Great Smoky National Park that, I mean, the people like David Pledis had read in the past before the, before they even wrote their books. Like There's the older books about missing people and even the Missing 411 series. 
But one thing that David Pelletti's manages to do, but these guys do not do, is make a correlation of all these things and come up with the missing people clusters, which was very interesting and a very unique and uh, great contribution to the field of missing people work. So yes, yeah, for that, as a result, for that, as I, uh, a result of that, and 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 for that, I do thank you and commend you, David Pelletti. Yeah, and as a result of his work, there's I, I believe there's already starting to be a, a huge uh, influx of, of uh, topics and books written on the on the uh, the topic. You know, there is, and I also want to thank. Uh, the show where does the road go for in the past giving me permission of on my youtube channel fritz ko vids to edit and use their uh videos where david pluddies had came on their show and from missing 411 and uh, for the topic and uh they also have interesting uh guests on their show where they talk about the same type of things that we do and like raven said they're getting into writing books along the same subjects of disappearing people and it's a it's definitely not a boring subject you know so i imagine there will be lots more books written on the the topic in the near future i plan on writing a book called mysterious michigan which i'm actually am in the process of writing currently and i will have a chapter in there about uh, interesting stories of missing people in michigan Yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be definitely interesting. There's a lot of stuff going on up there, man. I mean, even even recently. Well, but, we, uh, yeah. Uh, um, if you guys got any any questions or uh, comments, or you know, um, we plan on doing shows. You know, you know, some of our shows are going to be sporadic and they're going to be you know multi-topic, but we're going to try to stay on topic. You know, on a lot of these, but uh, you know, the trail leads out, man. That's where we got to go. You know? Yeah, and we try to provide you guys. Uh, with the format that the vast majority of you had decided that you liked. And from from most of the comments I've read, people do like the fact that we do not just bang the drum on the same topic that we jump around so they can get lots of different information and then go out and explore those topics, those those specific pieces on their own to get the full details. You know, it's kind of like we're taking them to the rabbit hole. We might not be able to go all the way down there with you folks, but we'll show you exactly which rabbit hole you need to go down. Yeah, and hopefully it's not while you're camping out in the woods in one of these national parks. Yeah, oh, unfortunately, it, that does happen to people. You know, they do disappear in these parks, and that's part of the reason what brought me and Raven here together. I mean, you, we do have to thank David Pilates for that. If it wasn't for him, I doubt we would have ever met or be talking now or having this show. And, that, Maybe. and I Maybe. would 100 percent agree with that. And I wanted to thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to watch our show here today. It really means a lot to us, and we do appreciate your guys' likes and we appreciate your guys' comments. Feel free to leave any comments you'd like, and uh, and we will respond accordingly. Well, thank you guys. You guys have a nice day, Raven. All right, stay vigilant, like Jesse Ventura says. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love it. All right, guys, have a nice day. Yeah, take it easy.